You know, each and every one of you has the ability to get thick and blocky abs. You just have to train for it. And there's going to be people out there that say, oh, abs are all genetics and it's all meal plan. Yes, to a degree, right? Obviously, if you're super fat and you have a lot of body fat in your body, you're not going to see your abs. You're going to have to lose a little bit of body fat first, and that's going to be through diet and doing cardio and obviously exercising, right? And then as far as genetics are concerned, genetics will determine what your abs look like, but how thick they are and how much they stick out, that's going to come down to how hard you train them. Just like if you wanted to have big biceps, you're not just going to do pull-ups and bent over rows. You're going to do some specific training to target those biceps, like heavy barbell curls, reverse curls, hammer curls, um, single arm dumbbell curls, right? You're going to target your biceps independently of your back to make sure those muscles get the attention they need to grow. Same thing holds true to your abs. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what to do because 2024 is around the corner. I know a lot of you are going to go to the gym and this year it will be the year that you get those abs to really pop. Now, for those of you who have been here for a while, first of all, thank you for the support. Make sure you tap that like button. It really helps the video and the algorithm on YouTube. Uh, but to all my new subscribers, the way I do things here is I keep it very simple, okay? There's a lot of information out there, a lot of misinformation out there, but you know what? The basics always worked. That's what's worked for me. I've been on YouTube for 13 years, just turned 39, probably one of the only 100% natural athletes still on YouTube with a big channel, so it works, okay? And this video from nine years ago, four and a half million views, how to build more visible and blocky abs, the information here still holds true today, which is why I'm making a video going over the article I did for this content versus reshooting it, because why reshoot it when I can just deliver more information here? And what I mean by that is, I have like 1,500 videos on YouTube, guys. If you go to my website and go to the Gains Library, click on articles, you can find them all here. I pretty much have an article for every video. I'll post a link to this one down in the info section below, but this article outlines all the information in the video, and then I have photos of all of the exercises. Now, of course, if you wanna see a real life demonstration, just go here and watch it, right? But if you just want the cliff notes because you understand these exercises, that's what this video is going to be for. So, how to build more visible and blocky abs. It's a really simple recipe that I've concocted here, okay? You're gonna train your abs four days a week. And a lot of you, right, all, all, right out of the gate, a lot of you are like, what do you mean four days a week? I don't have time for that. Dude, it's, it's gonna take you like 15, 20 minutes max to do these workouts at the end of what you're already doing. I don't care if you're doing upper lower, I don't care if you're doing a five day split, push pull legs, uh, cardio based workouts, calisthenics, I don't care what you're doing. Do this at the end, or you can even do it on a rest day. It doesn't matter, but you can do it. All it comes down to is your own willpower, and if you look down and you don't see blocky abs, it's because you haven't put the, the time and the energy in yet. So that's all gonna change right now. So how this workout works? Well, you're basically doing two ab workouts, resting for one day, and then repeating those workouts. Day one, we're gonna focus on the entire rectus abdominis, which is a fancy way of saying upper and lower abs. Now you will hear people out there say, oh, you can't place emphasis on your upper or lower abs, it's one muscle. Yes, you can, don't be stupid. Uh, day two is obliques, it's a fancy way for saying, you know, doing twisty movements and crunching to the side, okay? Now, for each of these days, you're gonna pick two to three of the exercises listed below. So these are uh, days one and four exercises. These are days two and five exercises. Now, of course, if there's exercises that you like to use or maybe your gym has a machine that you like to use that mimics these movements, of course you can do that. All that I ask is that you're doing exercises that challenge you so that you get fatigued as you're doing your four sets per exercise you are fatigued in the 12 to 15 rep range. Meaning, if you were to go do bicep curls, and I said you're doing six to eight reps, 99% of you aren't gonna grab a 10 pound barbell. You're gonna grab a heavy barbell, like 60 pounds, 70 pounds, because that will get you fatigued in that six to eight rep range. So same thing here. If you're doing an ab pull down, 
Make sure you're putting enough weight on the stack so that you are starting to get fatigued by the time you hit 12 to 15 reps. Also, fun note, if you're doing an ab pull down, okay, and you go too light, the exercise is useless because it, you, it's going to throw off the repetition because the weight won't be able to pull you up after you bring it down. But that's getting a little too into the much of the details, which you can watch this video to get on exercise form, right? So the way this is going to work, day one, you're going to pick two to three exercises out of this list. And when I say certain exercises place more emphasis on the lower abs, I want you to make sure you have at least one exercise on your day one routine that places more emphasis there, and that's movements that involve lifting your knees to your chest, okay? So when you're doing a dumbbell hanging knee raise, so you're hanging and you have a dumbbell between your feet, the motion of lifting your knees to your chest Yes, it's training upper and lower abs, but we're placing more emphasis on the lower. Same thing when it comes to medicine ball floor crunch. The weight is here. We're bringing our knees to our chest um, and so on. So try to make sure you get at least one exercise where you're bringing your knees to your chest. Most of the other movements like an ab pull down or a floor crunch or a dumbbell toe touch where your upper body is coming off the ground, that's placing more emphasis on the upper abs. Granted, they're both hitting the entire rectus abdominis, but this is how you're going to plan your day. So try to have at least one movement on day one that involves lifting your knees to your chest. Now for day two, we're going to hit obliques. Again, you're going to pick two to three exercises. My personal favorites are the first two, wood choppers and standing oblique crunch. Now, people will say stupid things like, uh, if you do a uh, standing oblique crunch, your waist is going to get thick and wide. Yeah, that's stupid. Those same people are the ones that say, oh, you know, you can't train upper or lower abs. <laughs> Guys, like, if it was so easy to build muscle that if you did a standing oblique crunch, your waist got super wide, it would be just as easy to build every other muscle in your body. No, your waist gets wider because you're fat and you're not watching your diet, and you're not training your abs, and everything is getting distended as you get older. It's not from doing a standing oblique crunch, okay? As you guys start to train your obliques and work on these muscles, everything should be getting tighter and firmer. So just ignore people that say dumb stuff like that. Or they're on gear. And when you're on gear, gear meaning steroids, what happens is not just your muscles get bigger, but all your internal organs get bigger too. That's why a lot of these guys on stage look like they have pregnant bellies because all those organs are getting super big and there's no place for them to go besides push your waist out. So if you're natural, you don't have to worry about that. You can do your standing oblique crunches and your oblique twists and your Russian floor twists just fine and you're going to get some, some nice thick and solid obliques, okay? So... A little bit of a tangent there, but that's okay. Uh, day two, we're hitting obliques. Pick two exercises, wood choppers, standing oblique crunch are my favorite. But of course, you can do floor oblique twists. And dumbbell oblique twists are pretty cool too. Again, I go over all proper form in the video at the top so you guys can watch there. But on day two as well, after you pick your two oblique exercises, I still want you to do at least one variation of a leg lift to activate those lower abs. And make sure you bring those knees all the way up to your chest as you do your repetition or as high as you can. And that's it. You're gonna rest and then repeat the same exercises on day four, repeat the same exercises on day five that you did on day two, and that's gonna be your workout. And after about a month, you guys will see a transformation start to happen in your abs, on your core. Why? Because you're training these muscles in a way that you've never trained them before because you've been lied to or you just didn't feel like it. It's going to be one of two of those scenarios. Either you didn't have the motivation because you felt lost or you just didn't care and now you do or people fed you misinformation and said, you don't have to train your abs, you just have to work on your diet. No, that's dumb. Yes, you have to work on your diet, but you also need to work on the muscles too. So... This video explains it all. If you guys haven't seen it yet, it's a great video. Even though it's nine years old, it, all the information here still holds true. I'll link to the direct video below as well, but I have so much information 
that you guys can find on my website for free by just going to the articles section. And you can try all of my programs here for free too. Just go here, click on exercises and routines and more or real-time workouts, okay guys? All of my programs are here. You can try them for free. You can use my meal planner as well when you go to muscularstrength.com. So the new year is here. I'm going to be determined to help you guys get into the best shapes of your lives in 2024. So if you like the content, make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell, and as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.